Okay, so to continue section five, this is section 5b. So I'm going to give you several Lewis structures and we're going to identify the electron domain geometry and the molecular geometry for each. Okay, so starting with CF4, which if you'll notice the moving diagram is trying to show you a three-dimensional view of the molecule. And so let's look at the electron domain geometry first. I'm going to redraw it. And we're going to count the domains. So I'll start in blue for my domains. We have one, two, three, four domains. And if you recall, four domains is known as tetrahedral. Recall this from your notes. The molecular geometry, we want to look at the shape of the molecule. So we're going to do the A's, X's, and E's. So my center atom is labeled A, and each of my bonded atoms is labeled X. And if we look at the list, we'll see that AX4 is tetrahedral again. So notice in this instance, the electron domain geometry and the molecular geometry are exactly the same. And that'll actually happen anytime there are no lone pairs on the center atom. And so if you look at your list of domain geometries, you might find that it matches each of the following on this list. If you have two domains, it's linear. If there are three domains, it's called trigonal planar. If there are four domains, it's called tetrahedral. Five domains is called trigonal bipyramidal. And six domains is called octahedral. So you can actually find that each of my molecular geometries that does not have a lone pair or an E is going to match up with the electron domain geometries from your first list. All right, this one does have a lone pair. And in our three-dimensional diagram, that lone pair appears in disappears and reappears as the molecule is rotating. So I'm going to redraw my molecule again, and it's SF4 with a pair on the top. I'll go ahead and draw it on the right-hand side as well. All right, let's find the electron domain geometry first. Remember, lone pairs count as a domain, and then each of my bonded atoms is a domain. So I actually have five domains here, and we'll see that five domains is known as trigonal bipyramidal. Now we'll look at the molecular geometry, and we're going to do our A's, X's, and E's. Again, we have our lone pair here, so that's an E. The center atom is an A, and each bonded atom is labeled as X. So we have AX4E, AX4E, and that's going to be this one right here, giving me a shape of seesaw. Okay, we have CO2. Though they don't have those pairs of electrons on oxygen, remember all atoms have an octet, so even if they're not showing them, it's understood that they're there because they have to be in order for the oxygens to have their eight, eight octet, eight valence around them. All right, the electron domain geometry. Around carbon we have one, two domains. Two domains is going to be labeled as linear. The molecular geometry, we have A for the center and X for the side for the bonded atoms. So this is AX2, which makes the molecular geometry the same as well. If you'll notice, there's no lone pairs on the center of this atom. And if that's the case, then your electron domain geometry and molecular geometry will always end up being the same thing. Okay, this one does have lone pairs on the center. It has two lone pairs to be exact. So let me draw my Lewis structure first. Okay, 
we'll start with the electron domain geometry. We have two lone pairs on the center, which each are domains. So that's two domains, three, four, five, six. This one has six domains, so it's gonna be labeled octahedral. The molecular geometry, we have our two lone pairs, which are gonna be labeled E's. The center atom is A, and each of my fluorines is X. So we have AX4E2, AX4E2, and that's gonna be this one, which is square planar. Okay, PCL5. Again, each atom has an octet, so even though they didn't draw them, it's understood that each chlorine has three pairs of electrons around them. And we don't have to draw them, but I'm just drawing them to allay the confusion. I won't draw them around the second molecule, though. Alright, let's determine the electron domain geometry. We have one, two, three, four, five domains. Five domains is going to be trigonal bipyramidal. And then we'll determine our molecular geometry. We have A in the center, X, 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 and X all the way around. AX5, again, is trigonal bipyramidal. Now remember what we said last time, if there are no lone pairs on the center, then both your electron domain geometry and molecular geometry will be the same. So a list of the molecular geometries are provided for you on the back of your periodic table, and you, so you don't have to memorize them for your test. Just remember how to tell your electron domain geometries that if we have no E's, the ones that have no E, is going to represent for you your two domains, three domains, four, five, and six. And that's kind of your shortcut, so you don't have to actually memorize each one of those. So that's you, well, how you can figure out your electron domain geometry, and then just use your A's, X's, and E's to figure out the molecular geometry. Here's a quick chart to kind of break it down for you, that if we have two domains, as we do up here at the top, there's really only one possible uh, geometry and shape, and that's linear. If we have three domains, then it's possible to have a trigonal planar shape and also a bent shape, which in this case has one lone pair. Four domains has three possible shapes, five domains has four possible shapes, and six domains has five possible shapes.